Welcome. My name's Brian Roshetsky. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have a great episode. We're going to test drive the Ford all-electric Mustang Mach-E. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you'll be notified when more videos like this come out. Also, early thumbs up really helps with the YouTube algorithm, so don't forget to hit that thumbs up so more people will be able to see videos like this and share the electric car content. So let's get right into it. This is going to be a fun and exciting episode. I hope you enjoy. Thanks again. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Raymond with Brianna Ford. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Mach-E Select. Uh, I do have uh, my mask on for compliance, but our photographer is standing more than six feet away, so I'm going to lower that just for audio purposes. Anyway, uh, this is celebrating the 56-year tradition of the Ford Mustang. We're not replacing all of the old gasoline Mustangs, we're just adding this to the fleet. This has the same unique styling as the previous Mustangs, except now it's a four-door. For aerodynamics, uh, we've removed the door handles front and back, and we've gone with the small one button. We're using the mirror for wind resistance, and this is how you open the car. Same with the back, a little piston pops out. Hold the door so it won't go shut again. You grab the outside, open it, the piston is removed, and now you can open and close the door. It is a five-seater. The seats in the back do pull down. There's a bit of an illusion here. The height of the actual car is greater. This black uh, paneling gives that illusion that it's a nice slope sedan. The seats do fold up. Now for the logo, we do have the uh, digitized logo on the back. A little more update for 2021. The car does come with its own charger. So you can have a hardwired charger installed in the garage, or you can use the one that we provide for you. It's a, both a 110 and a 240 volt outlet will charge anywhere from four miles an hour all the way up to 30 miles an hour or greater, depending on whether you have 30 amp, 40 amp, or 50 amps installed in your garage. This is the charger and the de different adapters that come with the car. That's the 240, that's the 110, 120. And that's free, which comes with the purchase of the car. There's also an emergency Kit for weight reduction, we don't have the spare wheel, but we do have the pressurized tire kit under here. So if you do get a flat, uh, call the 1-800 number, or you can use the pressurized kit. This is a control for your garage door. If the front door opens and we don't want it to tap, you can hold this for two seconds to set it. You can set it at a lower height. Hold oh. that and that will set the lighter height. That way you don't get any dents or scratches on that. Does it also have the foot thing? Um, on some of the premiums, yes. This one does not, but that is an option on the premiums and I think it's also on the first edition. I'm pretty sure I read that. Yeah. And that's a very simple waving of the foot underneath. The charging port is on the left front side. This is what we consider a level two charger or for the 240 outlet or the 110 outlet. The bottom one is the DC fast charge. On a DC fast charge, you can get anywhere up to 80% of charge in as little as 30 to 45 minutes. Depends on if you stopped in at a 50% charge, now you're gonna get done in 15 or 20 minutes. These five bars underneath here flash when it's charging. Each one represents a 20% state of charge. So this is 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100% charge. Now, often people want to know what's under the hood. I'll show you that real quick. It's a two-step process for safety. The first is to release the safety latch. That way, if you forgot, to close the hood or it didn't close all the way, there's still a latch to keep it. The second latch is to release it. And now you have your additional storage. They call that the front or front to trunk. This is completely removable. 
And then if you wanted to store ice or cold beverages up here, there's a drain port underneath to drain as well. Heaven forbid somebody did it and they're not supposed to. If a small child, for whatever reason, got stuck inside here, there is an emergency safety uh, release right here. The windshield wiper fluid is here. This is the select version. This has the 18 inch rims. The premium version has the 19 inch rims. The grand, uh, the GT version, thank you. Uh, will come at the year's end. That one will have the 21 20 inch rims and the painted calipers. The underside of the car is completely flat. And you have your door keypad as well. there's ways to extend the range even more. The faster you drive, the more energy you use. Cut. Anyway, the simple dial is here. We're gonna go over to drive. Check out which features we want. We're gonna start off in the whisper mode. And then later on, we'll move over to drive. Engage, which is a medium. Unbridled is the fast. I have turned off the propulsion, but we can make fake engine noises if we want. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and this is, okay, so this is not, no, this is, there's something functional going on. There's here. three things. Whisper is the eco mode, the most fuel efficient. Okay. We have 183 miles of range right now. Okay. Engage, we get a little more torque. Unbridled, we get all of the torque. And the more we drive this way, the faster this goes down. So gotcha. I always start off in whisper. I also have it set for one pedal driving. Have you driven an electric car before? I drove my boss's Tesla, I don't know, Model okay, I'm gonna turn this off, we'll turn it back on later. Okay. So that gives you regenerative braking. The kinetic energy from the movement of the car and the spinning of the wheels goes back into the battery. I remember when I took my foot off, it felt more like a brake than a coast. Yes. So right now it's going to feel like a coast because I have to turn it on. Got it. And what, because it's very sudden, this is one of the more aggressive ones. This one and the Chevrolet Bolt are the two most aggressive e-brakes that I've seen. I like this one. So if you were going to drive around town and get groceries, mm -hmm. which mode are you going to use? Whisper. Okay. And I'm going to go 80 on the toll road. Which one are we using? Well, it depends on, you know, how fast you want to go. Really, unbridled is if you want the zero to 60 and 5.8. Got it. That's so it's, it's, it's really acceleration. It's for, it's for power freeway. Curve. If you need to get on the freeway quickly, you know, some of the downtown roads here in Austin, where that on-ramp, uh, when short. you're going from the lower deck, to, you, then you want to be an unbridled. But once you're on there, then you can go to Whisper. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and on unbridled, is it also increasing region? No. Oh, okay. So this is more of a power curve of torque and acceleration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can let you guys drive from here. Do you feel safe turning around here? Let me, let me go in the back here. Yeah. I know I might have somebody. So everything inside you're going to feel is a soft touch. Okay. Oh. And that'd be a tiny straightaway here if you want to try whisper. You can loop around inside the parking lot and then try engage and you can do one or two. This is not going to be uh, monitored. Although I say that just got cops in right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I know a fine of officer of the law. Because we can get over the speed limit very quickly if we want to. And can can you change the region amount? That I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Now you can in like the the other cars. Hmm. Okay. Like the Nissan, you can put it in one mode and then they call it B mode. So there's two different yeah. modes there. How are you able to learn so much about a car that you have to use? Um, I've been studying this for six months. Wow. I watch every YouTube video <laughs> exactly. that's out there. First, if you're on the track, 
something, if you needed to get around the Domino's truck, this is the mode to be in. Will it do that automatically? Will it sense that he's that you're trying to accelerate faster? No. In the future, it may, and it'll have future software updates. Um, that's part of the, like you'll see here on the screen, we've got the adaptive cruise control. That's the little blue button, the blue up there by the car. Okay. That's telling you how close you are. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you'll see some buttons. Go ahead and touch them. Through here? Yep. You'll start to see that thing change. So now oh, we set wow, it to yeah. four car lengths. And so what is it going to do? Do. How so is it? eventually that's going to get the lane assist and then in the future this reflective black thing is cameras that'll track your eyes that's ah. when you'll have the hands-free we don't have the hands-free right now today but they're but I mean that's there that's literally a placeholder the car is set for that sometime this year wait it, are there cameras in there now yes oh you mean that's the difference between that is a software update that and highway safety laws and politicians giving us permission to drive gas free. Okay, I'm going to speed up. Your hands free right now? Go ahead, jump on it. Oh god. Look. Is that fake engine noise? That's fake engine noise. Oh, that's cool. That's oh, cool. And now we can turn it off. Can you... Oh, propulsion sound. And uh, hopefully, I would assume in the future, there maybe have different types that you'll download. I make it sound so. like a V8 or make it sound like a cyber car. So now we don't have the fake engine noise. I turned it off. I'm oh, sorry, is what you just said that the, the car I bought can, will be at some point in the future hands-free? <laughs> okay, you want to hear my bad joke? Yeah. <laughs> you know he's, he's working on coming out with an air conditioner, right? No. So he's working on, on an air conditioner, and then he's also going to come out with an electric lawnmower. Guess what's going to call the electric lawnmower? What? The Elon. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually really funny. Make sure that goes in the what, YouTube video. What is this <laughs> Is that long I range? I don't know. Mode? Long range mode? No. I think that's low. It like, does seem that way. Like low gear. Okay, let me let me tie that test that out. Everyone's head back. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, we're good. And really head back. Oh, I mean, okay. Is that what that is? Well, it's pretty. It's still pretty good either yeah, way. Either way. Am I in unbridled or normal? No, I think we were on unbridled. Okay. Well, it does yeah, have harsh braking. Yeah, uh, region. I I like harder region. I do too. I didn't at first, but now. Yeah. Because it makes it does make it feel more like a sporty vehicle. Like you're shifting gears when you're in a high gear. But see, I I notice now like I'm more adaptive and aware of red lights to like. Yeah, because you've been driving red, red. Yeah. Because uh, when you. In a gas power car, you just didn't think about it as much. And I guess now I'm older, I'm not in as much of a rush. And now I, when we get closer, it. I'm gonna make a phone call and I'm gonna have them open the doors and we're gonna drive this right on the showroom floor. Do you like the one pedal? Yes. It's already set to the, the phone, so. So if you were to bump this up to the Y, why would you get this uh, instead of the Y? Today. So, personally, and yeah. I, I own both. Right. Eventually, I'm going to have both side by side. I like the creature comforts. The Model Y went with the minimalist thing, which is cool. Yeah. But I still like my but buttons and gadgets. I actually like that this is real uh, brush metallic, not a graphic, not a sticker. Mm. I, I bought a sticker for mine. And mine looks like this, but this is actual metal. And brush metal where the tests I have are rubberized traffic. Okay. And what's the difference in the price point? Uh, they're about the same. Okay. Now I also pick up this heads up display here which I don't have in the Tesla which I like and then in the future Tesla has a small camera here we have one also okay but this is for your eye tracking <laughs> and that's and that so oh oh I'm freaked out or uh, I'm I'm wigging out because uh, the car is coming up quicker than I expected. Or I'm inebriated. I'm uh, tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's great. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so we get no place to go. Right.
only thing that would make that more fun is if, if it were a Mustang. I know, it really uh, would. <laughs> that would just be like the clip of a lifetime right there. So the GT, uh, which will be coming out in the fall, 0 to 60 and 3 5. This one is 0 60 in the high 5 point or high 6 point. But that's and a. That's a ninety thousand dollar car, right? Sixty. Oh, okay. And the GT starts at about sixty. Now, when we get up here, you're going to see two gas stations. If you pull over to the seventy-six, that's where I'll change because I have to drive it on the lot. I have to drive it into the showroom and store. I'm going to pull the mirrors. We get out and then we can do the internal walk around. We won't have the wind noise. That wind is strong. Speaking of wind, when you're doing test drives for rain, that makes a huge difference if you're driving into the wind right. or if the wind is at your back. The faster you go, the more energy you use. Okay. So if you want to get 230 miles and you want to drive it to 250 miles, you can do so if you keep it under 45, 50 miles an hour. My wife's commute from Round Rock to downtown Austin. If she's taking I-35, she's never gonna hit 40 miles an hour anyway, ever. Right. The traffic at that time of the day just won't allow her. So even though she's not trying to, she's extending the range. So even though EPA says in a lab, we get 230 miles, you can extend it beyond that. Just by hyper -miling. So, do you know what hypermiling is? I don't, I think. You guys have had a little bit. Ryan, do you know right? hypermiling? Yeah. yeah. So, you can't do this in a gas car because you have gears. I would try. But you can <laughs> shift this to neutral right now and post. That's part of hypermiling. So, people that do it as a band, and I can't recommend it, especially in a camera. Driving really slow. Yeah. yeah. They'll find little hill grades like this and they'll basically shift to neutral post down the hill, use the weight of the car to build up forward momentum. Now they've gone from 55 to 58, but they're not using any energy because they're in neutral. Now when you shift back into gear, you don't have to worry about the transmission. Oh, it's not going to be going. It's not going to be oh, it is. A... Can he hear it outside? No. Okay, it's an internal yeah. speaker voice. It's kind of interesting. I, I've seen so many different uh, pros and cons on both. And the nice thing is, guys, you, you know, if you want to stick with the secure provision, we're not getting rid of gas cars yet. That's another five, six years down the road. Yeah. You know, so all we're doing is introducing a new pony to the stable. That's all we're doing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But Jay, you speak like Jay Leno because Jay Leno, his daily driver is an electric car. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, his daily driver is a Tesla, huh. and I'm sure he's going to get this car immediately. I'm sure right. he's on the list, but he, he his daily driver is what is easiest to drive and what's like kind of you know, just uh, really what you want to drive. But he's he puts it like he can drive that car every day, and then on the weekend we can go to the track and take out the fun cars. Right, right. right. You know the loud cars and the other cars, and it makes it almost more exciting to go back to those other cars.